Hi guys! As a little addendum to the video on the extra dimensions I made with Athene, I made this video to discuss a bit the basics of string theory, like why this called the theory of everything and why it does lead to extra dimensions. So first of all, why would we need string theory? Well, as you might know, one of the big open questions in modern day physics is the combination of relativistic quantum physics and general relativity, or more specifically gravity. In other words, small light things and large and heavy things. We don't have a theory that is able to describe both at the same time. Do we care? For sure, because there exist objects that are both small and heavy, like for example black holes, and thus combining the two regimes. This problem can be formally rephrased as we don't succeed in quantizing gravity. By quantizing a force, we essentially replace the classical view of an all permeating force field by a quantum field, which will have excitations under the form of elementary force particles, also called bosons. The difference between a classical field and a quantum field is that the classical field is something real, the field itself is an observable. A quantum field, on the other hand, is merely a mathematical tool, but its excitations, the particles, are observables. In this way, scientists have been able to quantize the electromagnetic force, which is responsible for light, electricity and magnetism, by introducing the photon. The weak nuclear force, which is responsible for nuclear decay and this radioactivity, by introducing the W and Z bosons, and the strong nuclear force, which keeps protons and neutrons together in the nucleus and quarks in a proton, by introducing the gluon. But for gravity, where the corresponding boson would be the graviton, it is not possible to do this within the current framework. The reason that it is not possible is that gravity has got a special property from general relativity. It is ultimately tied to space-time itself. Every object with mass, like a star, will deform space-time, such that every other object with or without mass will have a curved path whilst it actually tries to go straight. That's why also light gets bent by stars even if a photon is massless. So, let me try to redraw it a bit more closer. Okay, so this is from the side. And you see the space gets curved by the star. Conclusion, when we try to quantize gravity, you could say that in a way we are actually quantizing space-time. The associated particle of the quantum field that we call space-time is the graviton. And that's the problem, because any quantum field will have random quantum fluctuations, particles popping in and out in a way that the total net result is zero. By the way, if this interests you, the quantum fluctuations, have a look at uh, the Casimir effect in Wikipedia. So, at the really microscopic level, space-time is constantly fluctuating in all possible configuration because it is a quantum field. But general relativity dictates, dictates us that this would sum up into an infinite amount of energy. In other words, space-time would destroy itself. This is one of the ultimate quests in modern physics, finding a theory that is able to describe both quantum physics and general relativity, a so-called theory of everything. String theory is a good candidate, but why? Uh, note that, until now, Every particle refer we refer to is treated as being zero-dimensional. A perfect point, without a length. If you would zoom in, it remains a point, and it remains a point. String theory changes this assumption and treats every particle as being one-dimensional, a line with a given length. We call it a string. And this has a very nice consequence. If you choose the length of the string to be really, really small, just a bit larger than the space-time fluctuations, this length is called the Planck length, you get some kind of smoothing effect on the fluctuations. If you do the math, the infinites disappear. This would be like a layman's conceptual explanation to why string theory is a viable theory of everything. It solves actually the fluctuation problem of space-time. And that's where the optimism stops. For several reasons. First, string theory misses all predictive, predictive power. It predicts 10 to the 500 possible universes, all totally different, of which only one is ours. Why is reality, how we know it, exactly this one, and not one of the 10 to the 500 minus one others? 
It is a huge shortcoming for a theory when it is not able to give an unambiguous prediction. Second problem, string theory is prone to extremely advanced and sometimes unsolvable mathematics. It's a level higher than standard mathematics, actually several levels up. Several other problems exist, minor and less minor, but the most clear one is the need for extra dimensions. String theory simply won't work in four dimensions. The problem sits in the boson. The photon, for example. We know it is massless. Otherwise light wouldn't be able to travel unlimited. If it was massive, it would decay at some point. But the mathematics in string theory dictates us that the photon can only be massless in some specific number of dimensions, like 10, 11 or 26. If string theory is right, we have more than four dimensions in your universe. Point. But where do they go? We only see three spatial and one time dimension. There are two different ways to hide extra dimensions from our daily microscopic observation. One way is by making them much smaller than the four dimensions we know. This is called compactification. Another way is by making them big. By the way, both are explained in the recent video with Atheen, so I will not fully repeat it here. Just a little recap, hiding dimensions by making them smaller can be understood by looking at an electric cable in the street. From far, it looks like a line, a one-dimensional object. But if you come closer, you will see that it is in fact a curved cylinder. It also has a second dimension, parameterized by its radius. In this way, the extra second dimension is small and will not be visible to the macroscopic world. On the other hand, Dimensions could also be hidden by trapping our universe on a four-dimensional object, we call it a brain, living in a higher dimensional space, called the bulk. It is like the surface of a piece of paper. It is itself two-dimensional, but it can easily live in a three-dimensional world, like a room, the real world in this case. Using the dimension trapping is called brain world theory, and it allows for lots of exotic theories and nice explanations for dark matter, the Big Bang, and so on. See the video with Athene for more on this. Voila, this was my short introduction to string theory. Let me know if you liked it and if you, know, if you want to know more, I could for instance also make a video only on dimensions and how they are used in physics. Thanks for watching.